Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this really simple rotor in Word. So all you need to do is simply click on one of the names, copy and paste it by holding down the Alt or Option key, and then drag them into the spaces. So let's open a new document. Firstly, I'm just going to turn this page round. So go to Layout, Orientation, Landscape. Then we're just going to go to Margins and make those margins narrow. Then I'm just going to insert the title starting at the top. So go to Insert, Text Box, Draw Text Box. Now you might be thinking, why don't I just type out the title? Well, I find text boxes far more flexible and customizable as you're allowed to move them anywhere you want on the page. So now I'm just going to select my text, go to the Home tab, select a font of your choice. I'm going to select this one and then select the size of your choice. I'm just going to select 60 and press enter. This happens, just extend that text box. If I deselect this, you can see I've got a borderline. So select the text box, go to shape format, go to this icon here, click on the drop down and select no outline. And there you'll have your title, which will allow you to move it any way you like. Next, I'm going to insert the logo. So go to insert pictures, picture from file, select the logo of choice. I'm going to select this one here and click insert. When you insert an image, you won't be able to move it. So just select it, go to wrap text and select in front of text. Then you can move it wherever you like. And of course, resize it. I'm going to pop that there for the minute. Then we need to make the names for your rotor. But before I do that, you can notice my cursor is up here. So if I was to insert a table, it would actually insert here. So I'm just going to press the return key a few times. Just move the title back up here and the logo. Then when we click here, you can see I can move this down without disturbing this top section. And then here we need to enter in our shape and our text. So click insert shapes, click on the drop down, select this shape here click and drag out a rectangle and then you can make the rectangle because it's a curved edge rectangle you can use this little yellow square here to make the corner edges rounded if you wish and you can see we've got an outline so I'm just going to take that outline off by clicking on this icon here and selecting no outline and then shape fill you can select from any of these colors or you can go to more fill colors and select any color from the color wheel by just moving this cursor around here and your selected color will appear here. I've already got some recent colors, so I'm just going to select from those. And then to enter in the text, go to insert, text box, draw text box, and then just click and drag out a text box. Then just enter in your text. And here we get the opportunity to customize this text. I'm just going to go to the home tab. And for here, I'm just going to check that's all 12. Perfect. And then as you can see, this text box has a white background and a black border. So we're going to select it, go to shape format, select no outline, and on shape fill, no fill. Then I'm going to make sure that my text is in the middle. So go to home, select center. And then if you want to just move this up a little bit to save some space. You can do that, but you can see actually my margin here interferes, so I can move it to about here. If you find it's a bit clunky, if you hold down your Alt or Option key, then that should make it a little smoother for you to make those adjustments. And again, we can move this down if we need to, and we can make this smaller. Perfect. Now, once it's in the center, we can just reduce the size of this box a little bit. And then if we select this box here, hold down the command control key and select the outer box or the shape, go to shape format, go to align, select align to center, align, align to middle. Now, because you can see the margins at the top and the bottom aren't equal, then this one you're going to have to do by eye. So select the text, then just use your arrow key to move it up to until you're happy. Then again, select them both by holding down that command or control key go to group and select group. So now this is all one group. So now we can hold down our Alt or Option key, click and drag, 
and again. I'm going to make seven names, but you can do as many as you need. I'm going to click and drag this one out as well. So all I need to do, I will speed up the video, you're not going to watch me do all of these, is select the name, go to group and select ungroup, deselect, reselect the shape, change the colour to the one that you want, then select the name and then type out the new name, adjust the box as you need to, to accommodate the name. Make sure it's in the centre again, so select both of those items, the name and the outer box, align, align to centre, and once you're happy, go to group and select group. So I'm going to speed up the video and go along and do all of these, and then I'll come back and show you how to do the actual rotor. So once you've finished all the names, I'm just going to select them all by holding down that command or control key. We'll go to align, distribute horizontally, that means there's an equal space between them all. Align, align to top, and now they're all perfectly lined up. Now you can group them together and then go to align, align to center, and that will center everything to your page and then simply go to ungroup so that you can then select each one individually for your rotor. So let's just zoom out a bit and let's go to insert table. And we're just going to select one row of seven cells. Then I'm just going to make some adjustments by selecting them by clicking on this top left square. Go to layout and in the height, I'm going to change that to 0.8 and press enter. At the same time, I'm going to go to this icon here, which is aligned to center. Then I'm just going to go ahead and click on insert below. And I'm going to do that a number of times. And then I can get started to insert my text. So just going along, I'm going to insert the days of the week. Then underneath, I'm going to put the date. I'm going to select the date, press Command or Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to select all of these and press paste Then go back up to the align to center icon. And then I just need to change the number at the beginning. Just saves me typing out all of that text. Then I'm going to put all my timings in. And again, if I type them out, I can then go ahead and copy and paste them across. And then we can leave three spaces or five spaces, depending on how many staff members you have working each shift. Click on the bottom row here, make sure on layout, and then click insert below. Now, if you've got more staff members, but you want to keep this to one page, then you will have to decrease the height of the cells. So I'm going to leave three spaces and then go to my next timings. Then again, leave three cells and then go to my next timings. Now you can see these timings don't fit my cell. So I'm just gonna to go to the home tab and I'm going to reduce them until they fit. So they're now at 11. Reduce these to 11. And do the same here just to make them consistent. We can make these two rows at the top here bold. So select them both and select bold. And then just to create some interest, we can actually decrease the size of this font by using this icon here. Decrease font size. And then we can actually decrease the height of this cells because we're going to merge these together. So I'm going to go to layout and in the row height, I'm going to say 0.5 and press enter. And then select these two rows, go to table design where it says borders, click on the drop down, and I'm going to uncheck inside border. So I take out that middle border. The cells still exist. You just can't see the border line. We've just taken it away. Then I'm going to go to shading and just click on the drop down, select a color of your choice. And then I'm going to select a slightly lighter color for the timings. And do the same here. Of course, this is personal choice. You can select any color you like. So just to make some final adjustments, make sure your logo is lined up with the end of your table here just to provide some continuity. And again, try and make the S line up with the edge of the table as well. And then once your table is complete, just go ahead and make sure you're happy with this placement. 
So now once you're finished, all you need to do is click on a staff member, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag and it will copy a staff member across. Now as you can see, I've made the mistake of making my names a little too big, which is fine. I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to then select all of my staff members by holding down that Alt or Option key, clicking on any of these bottom squares, click and just drag up and then just drag down. Let's try that again. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select these cells. I'm going to go to layout. I'm going to increase the size to one centimeter and press enter. Do the same with these cells, one and press enter. And then of course with these as well, one and press enter. If we've got any cells here, I can just select it, right click, delete cells, click OK and then just move this table up, place your cursor above the table and just hit the return key or the delete key just until that table moves up. Perfect. So select your staff member, hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag and you can then slot them into place. Just keep clicking and dragging to where you want them and gradually fill out your rotor. Okay, so you get the idea. Clearly I need some more staff members, but you get the idea of how this works. So once you're happy with the final thing, you can either export this as a Word document or a PDF if you need to send it to somebody. Alternatively, you can save this as a template. Now ideally you want an empty sheet, so save it as a template before you start filling all the names out into the actual rotor. The way to do that is to go to File, Save as Template, Make sure you're on the templates file here. Make sure you're on Microsoft Word templates and then click save. Don't forget to name it whatever you like. So then save it. Then when you open Word, the software Word, in your home page, you will have your templates. This will appear in your templates and you can use it over and over again. Just don't forget to change the dates. If you don't want to make this rotor yourself, there is a link in the description below where you can download this rotor and go ahead and just change the names. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.